vocês, Andreas, Ted Flat, Ted Flot. I don't know, babe. You nailed it. <laughs> Welcome to Thank Campus you. Party. Thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, I think it was a kind of introduction. My Portuguese is not that great, but I'm going to make a wild guess. Um, it's such a pleasure and an honor to be here in Brasilia. Um, I'm here to tell you about a project that tries to take on a social crisis that's been creeping up on New York City the last 10, 20 years. Um, first, I'm going to try to set the stage and give you a snapshot of the current state of affairs in New York City. This is where I've lived and worked the past seven years. I wish I could tell you this is my office view as well. Sadly, it is not. New York City uh, is a place that's doing quite well for itself. Unemployment is at a record low, and job creation rates are higher than ever. Um, the GMP of the city shows about $1.4 trillion in value generated. To put that in context, that's the, that's the equivalent of South Korea's total GDP. And total property value in the city is about $1 trillion. So overall, the city is, is stronger than ever. But as with most upsides, they also tend to cast a shadow. New York City is also one of the most unequal cities in the world. Gentrification, which is a force of good, um, can also be a force of major distress as it's causing dramatic rent increases. And since 1960, the rent has increased by about 64%. Meanwhile, the, uh, inc the uh, income levels have increased by a mere 18. And so this is forcing the average New Yorker to spend about 65% of her income on rent. And meanwhile, the city appears helpless in meeting this housing demand as uh, hundreds of thousands of apartments are being deregulated. And so the current ratio of uh, low-income households to low-income apartments is uh, today way off. So the consequence of this is that it, many are struggling to, to keep or to find an apartment. And this map here shows you um, the number of evictions in the city between 2013 and 15. It's about 450,000 evictions. And so although these condo towers and apartment buildings are shooting up all over the city, the developers are forced to focus on very high-end residential in order to make a profit. So in a former working-class neighborhood such as Williamsburg, you can now live in a place like this. And meanwhile, your neighbors might have to cope with conditions like these in, in homeless shelters. Homelessness is one of the worst social disasters in America today. It's a true home and a human crisis. Um, and in New York City, the disasters become increasingly clear the last few years. And this graph here shows you the dramatic situation with a homeless population that has not been higher since the Great Depressions of the 1930s. And so tonight, sadly, over 62,000 people will be sleeping in the shelter system of New York City. But the total homeless population number is quite a bit higher as very many 
actually prefers to live on the street. As many of the shelters today have up to 70 people living in one room together, these can be very hostile and violent and, and filthy places. So many prefers or feel safer living on the streets. Homelessness is first and foremost uh, a social crisis. But it's also um, a dramatic economical burden for the city who is today pouring about a billion dollars onto the issue in trying to address it each year. And because of the capacity issues that I mentioned, they're also spending quite a bit of money every night to house homeless. And this is because as a homeless in New York City today, you have a so-called right to shelter. What I became increasingly aware of and saddened by this reality, I also find myself sitting in client meetings discussing high budgets for second and third homes to people in very different situations. And this contrast started to consume me and uh, I ended up taking a deep dive to try to learn more and see if there was something that I could do. I noticed how the city had tried to, they made some attempt to try to address the situation, such as with this project here, where they relaxed their minimum square foot area requirement from 400 to 250 square feet. But with an average rent that's over $2,000, this illustrates the huge difference between affordable housing on one hand and housing that is affordable. Back in the 1930s, there was a kind of um, uh, housing unit called the SRO, the Single Room Occupancy Unit. These were very small um, affordable studio apartments that played a vital role in uh, housing the city's poorest. But in 1955, the city banned the construction of, of new construction of the SRO units. And so in the years that follow, an estimated 175,000 SRO units were taken off the market. And I wanted to see if there was a way we can bring these back but with a twist. This is a view from Crosby Street in Lower Manhattan, New York. It's on the way to my office. And this is the view that also sparked an idea for me. So if, the, if land is one of the main drivers of cost when building, what if we challenge what land is? Today, finding land to build on is very hard in New York, and it's also very expensive. But what if we instead look at the vertical land that, that is available and are building on top of these instead? And so the result of this study is a project proposal that I've called HOMED. It's Although it's a, very, it's a very ambitious proposal, but it is also quite simple. First, to make this area buildable, you first need a uh, framework to build on top of. And uh, as it happens, the city already has an abundance of a flexible structural system, scaffolding. So scaffolding serves as the uh, superstructure for this proposal. This also houses means for vertical access, staircase, elevators, as well as uh, on-site installation cranes. And for the housing units, I look to nature for uh, organizing principles. And the geometric shape 
that gives you the maximum volume and the minimum weight in relation to the perimeter area is the hexagon. So the units can then pack very efficiently and, and tie on to the, uh, the scaffolding structure beneath. And this yields a very flexible system that easily can be erected, modified, and uh, relocated. It also allows the system to be a place-based solution, meaning that it's not forcing people to move across town to find shelter. And this is an important distinction because it allows homeless people to, to sort of leverage their local natural support systems, which, which is family, and friends, neighbors, um, teachers, work, etc. So each unit measures about 9 by 9 by 9 feet, which gives us about 70 square foot of area. And it is made up of a hollow metal steel structure with uh, mechanical connection points at top and at the base. This houses uh, 3D printed interior modules made out of uh, recycled plastics. And then on top of insulation and uh, water membrane, there's an outer layer of uh, anodized aluminum panels. And finally, um, there's a um, uh, there's aluminum front fascia, and uh, and a uh, acrylic smart glass assembly. So the most significant departure in this proposal is the fact that these are individual spaces. In the current shelter system, uh, privacy is a rare commodity, and people often struggle to maintain their sense of dignity because of this. And although these are small spaces as well, they're also very space efficient. The 3D printing um, process allows furniture, equipment, storage to be integrated into the structure itself. And by combining different modules, you can create all sorts of different kinds of spaces within it, from different kinds of um, bedroom units to simple bathroom units, socializing units, to, um, to name a few. The units are also leveraging a, a range of different sensors and technologies um, such as smart lighting systems, um, wireless monitoring of vital signs, uh, lockable entrance and, uh, and ventilation. And uh, the capabilities of the smart glass front allows the front face to take on a few different kinds of modes. It could be all transparent, or it could be translucent for added privacy. It could even display digital content, uh, which could be artwork, it could be public information, um, it could be commercial content, which would enable revenue opportunities. And so, while the hexagonal shape um, allows these clusters to just add a, a gentle contrast to the urban fabric, at nighttime, they could uh, take on a much more striking presence as they are carrying out their mission. Um, homelessness is a very complex systemic issue. There's no single solution that's going to be able to solve this issue alone. It's going to require work on a broad policy making and regulatory level, but Ultimately, the main cause of the issue boils down to a lack of homes that is affordable to the people living in the area. If you are homeless in New York City today, you have, as mentioned, a right to shelter and for housing. But you also have to go through a so-called staircase model 
in order to prove that you are quote unquote housing ready. This project takes a different approach. It works with a model that's called Housing First. Housing First is a model that focuses on providing housing before trying to address any of the other issues that might be in the picture. And once housing is in place, it is then able to address all these other issues much more effectively. Before I started working on this project, I found myself on the subway home from work one night when a man in his late 30s entered the car I was sitting in. He was selling candy and uh, eventually he made his round through the car and he sat down next to me and we started chatting. His name was Greg. He told me that he was uh, born and raised in Queens, New York and that he now was living a very different life. He told me that he'd been homeless for the past three years. And he told me about his uh, unfortunate situation. Although this was a very uh, brief encounter, uh, my chat with Greg had a uh, profound impact on me. It changed this negative image that I had of who a homeless person was. This shaggy, old, dirty man who had failed in life. My chat with Greg made me realize that these are regular people, but who were put in some very different challenging circumstances to many of us, and who made some bad choices, but who did not have family or other kinds of safety nets to fall back on. These were people who perhaps were living paycheck to paycheck, like many in New York do, and then perhaps had a divorce or were let go from work. And this perception shift um, is critical if we are going to solve this issue. I used to choose to ignore the situation. It was something that I did not want to recognize. It was something that I thought was inevitable, just a mere necessary downside to New York City's tremendous upside. And again, this proposal is not a silver bullet solution. It's going to have to work in tandem with uh, other intervention that, that tries to address the, the underlying societal complex issues. But um, I think it is critical that the creative community is part of this process. So home started out as a sort of pro bono concept proposal that I worked on at night times and, and weekends, um, mainly to uh, try to call attention to and uh, maybe galvanize discussion around the issue. I'm now fortunate to be in dialogue with a handful of potential partners in New York and Europe um, trying to push this project forward and hopefully eventually make it a reality. I am also humbled to be speaking with the true experts on the matter, homeless people in New York City. This is Todd. Todd is living on 32nd Street and 6th Avenue in New York City. And I mean the actual corner uh, where he's living on a sidewalk. Todd, as many others, do not feel safe in, in the shelter and they choose to live on the streets. And uh, I've been uh, meeting with a few homeless people in New York um, to show them this initiative and uh, ask for their input and guidance as to what they might want or need something like this to have. And they've been all incredibly supportive and positive um, to push this project along. In the midst of this project, I also founded my, uh, my own studio, uh, Fram Lab. Fram is a Norwegian word. It means forward. Um, and that's simply because that's what I want to try to do, um, trying to address ecological, social, economical issues and uh, trying to ask sort of bold 
what-if questions. And by doing so, um, trying to set the stage for uh, maybe overly ambitious design interventions um, and start a dialogue from there. It's a studio that leverages technology, research, and above all, optimism. It's a studio that tries to put innovation and the improvement of life front and center. And last but not least, it is a studio that understands that a close dialogue with the people you are designing for um, is critical for achieving any successful design project. So I want to thank you for your time and attention. Um, please reach out to me or talk to me afterwards if you want to learn more or, or get involved somehow. I'd be, I'd be delighted to talk to you. Thanks again. To switch? You can all raise your hand if you have any questions. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is louder, and you can adjust it here as well. Great. Right. Awesome. Um, hi. hi. I'm going to make this question in, in English. Sorry for, for all that. Um, first of all, congratulations. I think it's a beautiful initiative, and it's also a beautiful solution. And I think that um, the one thing, the one negative thing I thought that I didn't think you addressed is that um, naturally the areas that take on the modules of the home program will have a bit of a dip in average income, of course, because of all the homeless that are going to live there. And um, that's probably going to bring some negative feedback from the, the natives of the region. Have you thought of any way to, is that um, the new inhabitants can um, give back to, to the areas where they, they started living? Yeah, that's... Um that's an excellent question. That is, that is spot on. That is the, um, and, and the city is already um, dealing with these challenges now. Like every time, because, because again, they have to find shelter to everyone that's homeless in New York. So the city um, needs to open up shelters. And I, I think the latest administration has a pretty ambitious goal to open shelters all across the city. And the first thing they're running into is um, not in my backyard. The local community there will always push back, um, and for the right reasons as well. I mean, they, there will be, um, there will perhaps be a negative impact, and how you try to address that issue is uh, is very tough. And I, honestly, I don't have the the magic uh, solution for how to go about that. Um, but I think you're alluding to uh, the right direction, which is to try to find a way for um, these new neighbors to add positively to the uh, neighborhood that they are um, residing in. And uh, how you do that, I mean, I have to ad admit that I, I don't know. But there will be a way to try to stimulate a positive interaction between um, the uh, existing local community and this new one. Um, so I don't really have, uh, have an answer beyond that. But that's a, that's a great question. Thank you. English? Hello. Hi. Hi. Eu vou falar em português. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, a apresentação foi muito bonita. Agradeço aí. E tem uma questão relacionada a esse movimento de pequenas casas. É, o movimento minimalista e de tiny house. É, recentemente eu vi um, alguns vídeos, até mesmo de Nova York, 
com o movimento de, de construção de tiny houses para homeless e que era feito com material reciclável. Então, a minha pergunta é mais focada em protótipos do seu projeto. Hoje já existem iniciativas dentro da sua própria cidade para a construção de, de pequenas casas para alguns, como doação ao trabalho voluntário. É, a minha questão é se você já construiu algum protótipo, ou já pensou em algum projeto, em algum lugar, para que provasse que esse movimento seu teria o um benefício. Excelente. Uh, ah, I'm speaking with my translator. Uh, um, thank you. Great question again. Um, prototyping is definitely the next uh, big milestone uh, that I'm working towards, um, and I'm I'm happy to um, or fortunate to work with uh, a fabricator in, in Eastern Europe. Um, we're hoping to be able to produce these at a fairly affordable um, rate, hopefully below $5,000 per unit. Um, but the prototyping is, has not yet been done. Um, that's, that will be, uh, again, the next, the next big testing point. And uh, hopefully to be able to do that together with um, the homeless people that I've been meeting with and, and having them vouch for this as well. Um, um, Yeah, but but again, uh, the, I think the other yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the, the 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 other initiatives you are referring to, th there is definitely a trend towards these uh, small and minimal uh, housing uh, projects, um, but that also touches on the, the the most challenging hurdle ahead uh, would be to find a way to work around or work with New York City building code because they have a very strict minimal square footage area. This goes, this cut that's like in a third as well. So their gut reaction is going to be a hard no, um, I think. So trying to find a way to um, have them embrace this and see the benefit and, and see that the benefit will outweigh the, the code non-compliance. Hi. <laughs> uh, what I want to know is if you ever tried to speak with USA government and how are they facing your idea? Yes, so I am, I am not in direct dialogue with the city, um, the city council, but I'm working with a, uh, an interest organization in the city who, who will have a, uh, a sort of a, a channel in. But um, just being able to sit down at the table with them um, is hard because they <laughs> they are rigged. Uh, they, they they do not embrace innovation because it will complicate um, the way in which they are working. So having them and and again this loops back to uh, this gentleman's question, like uh, finding ways for them to understand the the tremendous upside of this is is will be hard. Um, but I'm hoping to be able to speak with them uh, soon and present this project. So. Oi, opa. É, boa tarde. A respeito dessas vantagens de ter esse projeto nas unidades, que nem o amigo falou, que vão, vão as pessoas vão se incomodarem, o, o prédio pode ter uma desvalorização. Você já pensou a possibilidade de, de, uma, de gerar energia para os próprios moradores da, da comunidade e se saiu muito caro, alguma coisa do tipo? Um, yes. Um, um, and that back into my first question, like how do you create this, a, a, a symbiosis? between these two? Um, that is a question that I'm, that I'm walking around pondering now. I, and again, I, I don't have the silver bullet solution because 
there was this inevitable tension between them. Um, most of Manhattan and Brooklyn too um, have very um, high affluence uh, population. So it's really expensive residential uh, neighborhoods, um, which, which amplifies the difference between these two communities. Um, but I'm, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely open to hearing input as to how you can try to start this um, connection and, uh, and, and try to find ways to work around this um, inevitable tension. Um, I mean, maybe there's ways for uh, this new community moving in or, or organizing events or, or um, contributing to the workforce in the local area. Um, farmer's market. Uh, I, I just done, yesterday, I, when I was walking out at a dinner, I walked past this amazing barbecue joint in the corner where people are just like set up a barbecue place and, and people were just hanging out and having a blast. Like if, I've never seen such, such, inter, such thing taking place in New York. Like, but if something like that could take place, I mean, I think some things along those lines would, would definitely um, smooth now this, this tension, I think, and, uh, and could, could work towards that. Um, yeah, that would be my attempted answer. Hello, here, to your right. Uh, yep, hi, Zio. Hi, um, I wanted to know if you are, or if anyone else is um, like supporting you in studying, uh, is studying these units in terms of the building structure, like how the building would support the, the weight of these units. Yeah, so um, I'm working with a, with a small team of fabricators and engineers in, in Europe who, who will, are working on these things. But um, ultimately, the engineering questions I, I, I can't speak to. But um, creating uh, sufficiently strong structural elements that would hold these in place, uh, I'm very confident will, will, is possible. Um, but... No, I don't have I don't have the the, uh, the engineering figured out yet, but that's a that's a big one coming up. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank thank you again.